welcome to the Power Platform Rewind Show. This is our April 2021 edition, my favorite month. We've had quite a few big Power Platform announcements this month, so let's dive right in. First up on the list, the mixed reality components or power apps are now out of preview and into general availability. If you haven't checked this out already, the mixed reality components and power apps lets us view 3D objects and interact with those in mixed reality. It even includes some built-in measuring in VR. So as we're seeing here, we can have a power app where we can see different desks or workstations and we can actually visualize what those will look like in our space. So we have this mixed reality aspect, kind of like Pokemon Go. We can place the object in there and interact with that within our power apps. And with the measuring that's built in, we can even make sure that it will fit correctly in our space. So now we can feel comfortable using these in our production application since this is in general availability now. Now for some power virtual agents news. Have you been wishing you could back up and restore your bots across environments? Or maybe you need to recover your bot from a deleted environment. Now that's possible thanks to the environment lifecycle management functionality added for power virtual agents. So now we can back up, restore, delete, recover, copy, and reset. Now let's talk Dataverse. You remember all those lingering references to the common data service and Power Automate? Well, those are gone now and the new Microsoft Dataverse connector is released complete with the shiny new Dataverse logo. In addition to this name change, they made some behind the scenes improvements to the reliability and performance of the connector. Some of the things that I found interesting is for one, the ability to impersonate using the run as property and being able to trigger on a combination of events like create or delete or create or update and listing rows with pagination. All right, now for some Power Apps news. Code components are now available in our Power Apps portals. Now, right now it's still in preview and it's limited to supporting field type code components. So the configuration for these field type code components and Power Apps portals is very, very similar to how we would do that in our model driven apps. I provided a link here for some more documentation on the ins and outs of how these code components work in portals. So definitely check that out and I'll include a link to that in the video notes. Next up, Power BI, big news on the licensing front here. Now, why this has been in public preview for a few months now, as of April 2nd, you can now purchase Power BI Premium per user. This is going to give you access to all of the latest premium features like paginated reports, deployment pipelines, large data model support, etc. And pricing for this was actually announced last month at Ignite. It's going to set you back $20 per user per month for the standalone license or if you happen to already have an E5 license associated with you or an existing pro license, it's only an additional $10 per user a month. Now let's talk some connector updates. The Azure File Storage and the Excel connectors got some pretty big updates. So the Azure File Storage connector allows us to get to our files stored in Azure. Previously, this had a blob designation to it, which limited our interaction from a Power Apps perspective. Now that they've lifted that designation from the connector, we can actually use the Azure File Storage connector directly to store and display media files. So no more of that workaround business with Excel and all of that to be able to use Azure File Storage as a cloud storage service. What this does mean though, if you have ever used that option to automatically generate a power up from Excel, Azure File Storage will no longer show as a supported cloud storage service when you do that. But we can now invoke those actions directly in our power apps. So if you've ever worked with the Excel connector and power apps, you know that there were some, how do I say, quirks. A big one being only a single user could work with the Excel file at the same time. And we couldn't access Excel files stored on a SharePoint site. With these updates they pushed to the Excel connector, not only is it faster, it offers support for multiple users and can work with all standard document libraries, whether that's Office 365 Groups, OneDrive for Business, or SharePoint. Right now this connector is available when you add the data source through your Power App, but not yet when you say start from app. Power Automate Desktop also got some updates this month. They've improved the interaction with Java-based apps and applets. The desktop recorder now supports image-based recording. So we have the option now to record with image recognition, which will let us send clicks on images and even OCR to extract text from images. And we also have a new Save As button in the Flow Designer. Now this next one I'm super excited about. The COE Starter Kit is now available in Dataverse for Teens. Now COE stands for Center of Excellence, and it was a tool set created by the PowerCAD team at Microsoft back in 2019. They continue to add to and evolve this toolkit and it's become a core part of how lots of organizations manage and govern the Power Platform. Manuela from the PowerCAD team announced in a blog post that we can now incorporate the Center of Excellence toolkit inside Dataverse for Teams. You might be wondering what the big deal of this is. Well, it's going to enable more organizations to take advantage of the COE toolkit. 
some that might have been traditionally blocked from some licensing restrictions. By deploying this COE toolkit inside of Dataverse for Teams, you don't have to pay for Dataverse storage capacity or premium Power Apps licenses just to see and interact with those Canvas apps. You will still need premium Power Automate licenses though to run those flows that run in the background and do the syncing. But overall, the amount of premium licenses that you do need is greatly reduced. You can download it today by going to aka.ms forward slash COE starter kit download. Another huge announcement this month is data source environment variables. This is going to bring us enterprise grade application lifecycle management for the data sources that our Canvas apps and flows consume. The really cool thing about this is these environment variables are now natively built into the authoring experience for our Canvas apps and our cloud flows in addition to our solutions authoring and importing experiences. In addition to this, they've also released new and enhanced APIs to simplify working with these environment variables in code and ALM pipelines. And when I say it's integrated, it's really integrated. It's as simple as adding in your connection, choosing the list or the tables you're connecting to, and then you'll see on the right-hand side, the environment variable section pops right up. And we have the same experience in Power Automate with our dynamic content. Speaking of Power Automate, Another new feature that rolled out is the ability to trigger a flow directly from your Power BI dashboards. I just did a video about that earlier this week, so make sure you check that out if you wanna see more about how that works. In that video, I show how you can take a list of records from your Power BI report and send a notification in a Teams channel. If you missed the Power Apps community call this month, then you missed a lot of great demos. Harden showed a cool demo where you can make your Power Apps sessions persistent across Teams tabs. Rory Neary had a great talk about design principles for applications. And myself, Geetha, Matthew, Hugo, Hero, and Anton did a talk on the new custom functions functionality in Power Apps and the PNP repo that's set up where you can contribute your samples. The recording of this is available on YouTube if you missed it, and I'll put a link to that in the video description. And if you wanna check out that PNP sample repo, where you can see all the custom functions and other Power Platform samples, just go to aka.ms forward slash Power Platform hyphen samples. And finally, this one just snuck in in the nick of time for the month of April. The PowerCat team had another great blog post of the Power Platform Adoption Maturity Model. So if you don't really know what the PowerCat team does, or their Power Platform Customer Advisory Team. They work with huge enterprises that are all in on the Power Platform. So needless to say, by working with these big customers on big projects, they've learned a few things about how to accelerate Power Platform adoption in organizations. They've taken everything that they've learned and put that into this blog post where they outline the Power Platform adoption maturity model. It is definitely worth a read, some great information in here, and I can't wait to see what else they do with this. Oh, well, that is all the major news we have for April 2021, but May is just around the corner, and we have a lot of upcoming events for May that I want to make sure you're aware of. First up is the Microsoft Business Application Summit, also known as MBAS, and that is coming up quickly on Tuesday, May the 4th. This is Microsoft's conference focused solely on the Power Platform and Dynamics and Business Apps ecosystem. There are going to be a ton of great sessions. I myself am doing one on community with Heather Newman and another Learn Live session on getting started with Power Virtual Asian Spots with Gitsika Gupta. So hopefully you can go to myembass.microsoft.com, check out the session schedule and get signed up for some of the great sessions. And it's all virtual and all free. As part of the Microsoft Patterns and Practices Sharing is Caring initiative, we have a special edition of the Ask Me Anything on Power Platform Samples. So remember those custom functions that I was talking about in that PNP repo on GitHub we have for that? If you have any questions about what that is, how to contribute or how to use the samples, make sure to go to that Ask Me Anything event, which is the day after InBass on Wednesday, May 5th. Just go to pnp.github.io forward slash sharing hyphen is hyphen caring. You'll see a link there for the Power Platform Ask Me Anything. You can sign up and be there with your questions. I'm on the panel, Hugo Bernier, Louisa Fries, and I believe Matthew Devaney are, are all on the panel and they are to answer your questions. On Wednesday, May 12th is Teams Nation. Now, although this is a Teams focused event, they do have a power platform track with a lot of great sessions in it. And as you would expect, a lot of Dataverse for Teams related topics. So make sure you check that out. Go to teamsnation.online for more information. And finally, ending the month, we have Microsoft Build. This is May 25th through the 27th. This is Microsoft's biggest code first developer conference that they have. 
So if you do focus on code first development, make sure to check that out. They will have some Power Platform related topics in there about how to integrate code first development within the Power Platform and what's in it for you. So definitely check that out. Just go to mybuild.microsoft.com. So that's a wrap for the Power Platform Rewind Show, April 2021 edition. I'll see you next month. Thank you.